this was funded by them, so a big thank you to them. Um, we have a photographer artist from New York City, Jeanette Mando, who's going to talk to us today. She is an artist and specifically a light painter, and she's going to show you what that means. So everybody pay attention, give her our Shriver respect, and have fun. Washington High School. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Joy, and I guess the foundation that she mentioned as well. Um, so I hear that you're all photo students. Yeah. And so some of you have been light painting? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. And is there anybody here who is unfamiliar with light painting? Okay, so I'll just give a brief uh, description. This here behind me is a light painting, which is using a long exposure. And I did this on my rooftop in Brooklyn. And so it's all one shot. So uh, it could take up to 10, 15, 20 minutes. And we're using bulb. So the uh, lens is open, and it stays open while you're doing the light painting. And then you close it. So it's one long shot. My name is Jeanette Manso. I'm French-American, uh, born in China, kind of a crazy life. I uh, grew up mostly in California and France, and I moved to New York in 2018, so I'm kind of new here. Um, <clears throat> so what are you looking at here? A lot of times it's really fun to light paint during sunset because it allows you to have a light sky, but it's dark enough to light paint. So a lot of artists come to light painting through other arts, whether it be photography, graffiti, calligraphy, um, or even painting. I personally came to it through dance. So here is one of my very first light paintings uh, in Paris. And I um, was also passionate about belly dancing. That was my thing. So here you see me in a belly dance costume. And I have lights on my fingers. This is pre-digital and uh, pre-LED. So I had these little bulbs on my fingers and had the battery in my bra strap and I would dance with the lights, like so. And <clears throat> in this picture you can see three different lightings. One is a flash, which makes the body appear, which I call the matter. And then the light painting, which is the spiral that is from the movement of dance. And then you'll notice also like kind of a, a blurry, little lights in the background, those are city lights with the camera toss, which is the camera moving. So there's three layers of light here to look at. Uh, this is a contact sheet to show you how I started with a uh, black and white film with a 35 millimeter camera. And here I'm posing once again, but instead of having lights in my fingers, I just have a flashlight that I can move around in space and draw. Um, as soon as I realized that my movements were like actually drawing geometric shapes, I got real excited about all the possibilities that I could do with the light. So uh, I started photography really young, like at six. I had my first camera. It was a Rolex camera. I don't know if you've ever seen them. They're like a square, and you look down into it, and it has the whole world upside down. So I started with that, but it was just kind of like a hobby. Um, and I also started dancing when I was a teenager, but later I became professional, and I would dance in the French cabarets to pay my way through college, and I studied cinema and film, which kind of influenced me to get to light painting through dance and photography. I was uh, really fascinated by the way you could tell a story with uh, light painting, because there's a beginning and an end when you follow the movements. And the other thing that really seduced me about light painting is that it's the mystery of it. It's like, how was it done? How come it looks real and how come it looks magical at the same time? So I really was, uh, I like that kind of metaphysical aspect of it, where you have these kind of apparitions that look unreal, yet you're creating them in real life. Okay, so the process, for some of you who have done it, you probably know how fun it is. It's not as easy as it looks, but that's part of the challenge. 
Uh, so one of the biggest elements about light painting is the time element. And here you can see the time element by looking at the stop sign, and you can see the stop and go are both imprinted because of the time that the photograph took. And you can also measure time by how long it took to trace out the person and the bicycle. Um, and then here I'm using uh, existing scenery, which in the back here is Notre Dame. Um, and so there's this whole conversation between light and matter. Because in regular photography, it's all about lighting your subject. Whereas light painting, you can include that, but you can also add light as a subject. And you can draw with it and write with it. And so, um, for my first, in the beginning, I really try to balance in between the two. So here you can see, uh, this is a fashion shot for a dress made of light. And also because the, the, the process is so much fun, that it's uh, fun to share, and it also has this performative element. So I quickly started doing these performances with interactive events. And this is a, a public event I did in Paris in uh, 1993, to let you know like how long I've been doing this. Uh, and so the people would choose a background of their choice that was projected. This is San Francisco. And then they would be outlined. And then we'd add this little light stencil. Because you can actually make light stencils. Kind of like uh, graffiti stencils, but with light. So this was for the French National Photography Festival. Um, done in a museum, and in this case they chose a different background, which is the Parisian one, and had kind of had fun doing silhouettes without the person, and a person with just kind of like a streak of light. And it's kind of more like creating a scene. I, For me, light painting is more about making a photo than taking one, because you're actually like imagining it, creating it, sometimes even directing it. So this is more of like live performance stuff I did in fashion. This was for uh, an, a fashion event in a nightclub in the 90s in San Francisco. I'm still using black and white film. And here I have a full on studio flash to give it that kind of crispy, clean fashion look on the model and the clothes. And a simple light outline. Also in color. Uh, it was for a designer called San Francisco Leather, as you can see. And later here, um, this is a more recent fashion that I did in New York where I'm using a neon to do this like swish in the background to pop the model. Here's, here's a little bit of yellow lights. It looks definitely warmer. Yeah, it's a different light. The other one was a white light. This is a warmer light. Wait. I'm working with the stylist, okay. the designer, and the makeup artist. And the model. So this designer was called Overlapping Mask. See how the photo's happening in the that and the light painting. And in this light painting you can see uh, the circle in the back is done with a tube or like a laser type of uh, tool and then the like fuzzy smoky thing is LED wire. And she's lit by hand which means there's no flash, it's all done with flashlights by hand as opposed to the earlier ones. And then also this layering effect allows you to uh, do overlapping. Since the designer was called overlapping masks, I thought I would do a double exposure of two light paintings. 
So here I have the model, and then I put it together with another light painting that I created in the studio where I create every element with light. So you see here like with the lily flower and the lily pad, and next to it, a bamboo forest, and the leaves, once again, are a form of light stencils. And on her head, it's just like a garden lamp. So after this whole first uh, chapter of trying to balance matter and light, I got into like, I just wanted to do light. Just like, just light, that's it. Like I was, didn't want to have to do matter anymore. I still use the human body as a reference that you can see here in the silhouette. And then I just kind of dance with the light behind. And I do some more of this where I'm just using silhouettes. Um, the outlining, you can kind of see the 3D aspect as well, because you're in real space. So um, that's kind of fun to do. Um, and I really like, one thing I really also like about the light painting is that it transforms reality instead of reproducing it. And uh, in this case, um, you can see the person posing three times. And each time the person bends, I imprint the, the figure with light. Um, and in these like transformative images, I'm hoping to like kind of suggest new perspectives and ways of seeing things. Here's another uh, layering element. This is also a double exposure. Now this was all done on film, so I would have to roll the film back up and uh, shoot it again. And in this case, I first did the model with the spiral, and then I re-exposed it to the shimmering light on the water, like the ocean water. And whatever is black is gonna, it's gonna shine through, and that's why the body has like the little ripples. And then I started realizing that I could compose images with negative space. And so I made this metamorphic skull. Um, so a metamorphic skull is actually that 400-year-old art form where from afar it looks like a skull, but when you look closely, there's a figure. So can you see there's a person in here? And she's bending backwards. So you can kind of see her profile. She's bending backwards both ways. And also the skull, obviously, is an international symbol of death. I really started getting into uh, subjects around symbols and icons and seeing image as language, hopefully transgressing borders. Also, this, this is kind of inspired by, I don't know if you're familiar with the sugar candy skulls for the Day of the Dead. They're very colorful with the flowers, and so these are different variations. And if any of you have done light painting, you know it's a little bit random, so that every time you do it, it's a little different. And here, I'm also doing these handheld drawn up in, the, in space. So I did this series of actual symbols. This is a Roman cross. So I took a lot of practice to figure out exactly what gesture and then repeating, and in that way that all that repetition is very similar to a choreography. So you have to kind of figure out your choreography first, which gestures are going to make which shape, and then you have to practice it a bunch of times, especially if you're going to do it in front of people. Uh, this one also shows the different dimensions, whether it be two-dimensional or three-dimensional. And uh, in 2013, I was invited to an international light painting show, probably the first one in the world. And uh, this was a real highlight for me because all of a sudden I met all these other light painters from all over the world. And so uh, there was a group called the Light Painting World Alliance. That's why you see the LPWA. And uh, this is when groups of us started doing group light paintings, which is the most fun. Uh, so here you see the group of us out in this like public area in Paris, and each letter is drawn by a person. So here you can see the light painter on the left, you can see the light painters in front of the camera holding their flashlights about ready to do their letter. And on the right top, you see all the light painters in back that are doing the camera, that you need to do the capture. 
And you can see the group photo here at the bottom. Uh, at that time, I was one of the only women, luckily, that has changed. Uh, and so I went back to uh, doing more handheld light paintings, and in this case, it was the jellyfish. And uh, it took many tries, and with doing it, I kind of explored until I got to this one. But it took a bunch of time to get here. This one was exhibited in a group show. Now, I chose to do jellyfish as a symbol about climate change because they are extremely invasive and the reason why there's more and more of them is because of pollution. So that was the idea of this symbol. And then I started going back and integrating it back into real life scenes. So uh, once I figured out how to do the jellyfish, like which tools, which gesture, then I could go into the landscape and integrate them. Here you can see that I also light painted the whole scene. The little trees, the little smoky uh, LED wire, and also it was like a sunset because you can see the sky. So uh, here's a funny uh, photo. So from that initial LPWA group in Paris, then there was another one done in Spain, and here is the Spanish group that I met. And this is a light painting of light painters. You can kind of see we're kind of a crazy bunch. Uh, we uh, like to have fun and um, <laughs> we can get pretty silly, but always um, trying to perfect the light painting. This is in Spain. This is this big place is where we did a huge light painting. Um, here's another group shot. As you can see, it's getting bigger. Uh, and because of the, like, you're always wondering, like, how was it done with the light painting, even between light painters, it's kind of like this challenge, you know, how to do something all in one shot. So it's a lot of fun to um, share. And so we share our tools, we share our ideas, and then we actually share projects and do collaborations. And so back in France, the, the French group of us, we, we made our own group, and I'm the co-founder of the French League. And so we're really into this urbex, which is urban exploration. So we would go into abandoned swimming pools and abandoned buildings full of graffiti. And this is a group of us. We each have our own task. And um, so when we're a group, it's easier to make it uh, even better. As you can see here, somebody's outlining the top of the swimming pool. Somebody else is lighting up the graffiti on the inner walls. Uh, and this uh, like dome thing is actually a bicycle wheel that you make domes with. with your, you put an LED strip on it, and then you roll it, and it makes these domes. Then we have somebody in the center doing the large circle, and also uh, somebody lighting up the trees in the background. Here's another version with fireworks. Now fireworks are super fun. In this swimming pool, it wasn't dangerous, but uh, you have to be really careful with that. You can't do them anywhere. Um, and in this case, also somebody lit the foreground. But when you're working together, of course, you can make a much better image. And that's why it was so exciting to meet this like uh, group. So here's another group a photo of light painters. Uh, here we are in an, an abandoned uh, hotel that was pretty much destroyed. And so we take turns lighting each other and then each person kind of draws something. Um, to the left you can see like a calligrapher. You can see somebody made a heart with love and then a bunch of crazy stuff. And then somebody lit the walls. So here is another group shot. Uh, we're all falling out of the door. Why? I don't know. We're just being silly. But we're having a lot of fun doing it. And then um, each person has a task to like the others, write a word. Um, you can see the different types of word. The one in the middle is a graffiti artist who does like painting. And also somebody who lights up the wall so you can see where it's happening. Here's yet another 
a group like painting where we were in a park and they had these kind of strange sculptures and we kind of integrated our bodies into the sculptures. And we also wrote LFLP on the ground for light, it's the League French Light Painting. So, um, all of this like community aspect of it from the first meetup we did in Paris. Then we started these uh, alliances and leagues in different countries all over Europe, but also a little bit in the United States and Australia. And uh, all of this led from one thing to another. And uh, from the French group to the Spanish group to the international group. And it, eventually it led me to design these giant light paintings. So uh, here is a public event that was organized by the French League for um, the general public, public as a cultural event. And so I designed this uh, tree of life, which is a symbol of vitality that kind of went along with the uh, cultural center that we were working with. And the center part is all, I draw it all out by hand uh, with the chalk on the ground while it's still light, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, then the lead did the center part, which is the harder part. And then all around you have the public, like 70 people. And they all have lights and they can draw on the ground or write something or do whatever they want. And you have other light painters doing the walls, the fence, and we're even lighting up the trees. So that takes a pretty powerful flashlight if you want to get that far. Um, and in this case, there was a whole little story, and I wanted to make the tree look like it was underground, and that there, it was growing on like a blue planet, and there was a little ladder to go up into the real world. Um, a lot of my work does thrive on this kind of otherworldly look as opposed to reality. Um, I really like a lot of, I kind of explore escapism because I, a lot of times I, when I find reality too harsh, I want to like escape into a beautiful image. And so I imagine them and I make them. And in this case, it's, uh, a big venture. So I'm going to show you the making of. It's in French, so just ignore that. <laughs> so that's the castle. Here's the logo that I imitated, and uh, here you can see the, it's like in the castle's backyard, I guess. So here are the tools. Here are the people who are explaining to them what they're going to do. Do many of you speak French? <laughs> so here you can see we're using these kind of like another type of stencils. And I shout, go! And everybody does their little task, part of the image. And here's the result. Here you can see the drawing on the ground. So to be able to trace that, like right before the shoot, um, I have to practice a lot. Weeks. So I initially designed it on my notebook or my iPad, and then I practice it on cardboard, and then I practice it on the ground. Just like a performance. You, 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 you figure out what you're gonna do, you practice it until you're ready to perform it. And then at the end, uh, we're explaining to everybody the meaning of the, the giant light painting. And another thing I like about the giant light painting is that everybody is part of the big picture. And everybody participates in making uh, one, one long exposure picture. And in that way, it, it uh, not only shows you that light painting is participatory photography, it's also performative photography, and uh, you can 
um, be an active player instead of just posing or just clicking. You can actually run around. Um, these are some of the sponsors to give you an idea of how that worked. And then uh, this just got bigger and bigger uh, because UNESCO has dedicated one day out of the year, which is the Day of Light, the International Day of Light since 2016. So now every day on that year, the light painters all over the world try to get together and uh, do something. In this case, they were we did something for UNESCO and so we have like a lot of light painters here. And I had this idea of doing a constellation of planets. Because you know how you say artists are like on their own planet? So I thought that was kind of funny that they could all light paint their own planet and yet be connected within the structure of the constellation. And so this is what they did. Um, when they sent that to me, I almost cried. I was just like, oh my God, that's amazing. And so then I moved to New York. And so this was one of the first mandalas I did in a park in New York. There's about seven of us. Now this is a labyrinth. Now this labyrinth already exists in the park. So all we have to do is trace it with light. And you can kind of see the, um, the people in the background. It gives you an idea of how big it was. Um, and then we wrote Pax which is peace in Spanish. Um, and then, after doing some stuff in the parks, then I, uh, well actually my dream is to do like a major park in New York, like, like one day do Bryant Park and have like hundreds of people come participate. But meanwhile, I'm using my rooftop in Brooklyn. And so I did this other mandala, and I was really into doing the mandalas for the group uh, light paintings because mandalas is an art form that um, is collaborative, and it's also symmetrical, and I also like how symbolic it was. So here you can also see the, uh, how big it was by the people. Um, and also, I have, so these are all the different vegetables that are going out in a symmetrical figure. Another making up. series of light gardens on the urban rooftop. And I'm also, for a longer period, I've been working on uh, giant light mandalas. So I wanted to do a vegetable garden, and I thought I would combine the two and make a giant veggie light mandala. One of my first steps is to sketch out the drawing on my notepad so that I can figure out the exact design and which vegetables. So then my second step is to make each light tool for each vegetable. Once I've done that, I can go up on the rooftop during the daylight and sketch out with chalk on the ground the mandala that I designed.
So, uh, also, now if you have any questions too, just save them for the end. I don't have to answer anything. Um, so this is also on my rooftop. Uh, this time it's a drone shot. So that's why um, it's from the sky. And with the drone, it was a little bit more complicated. Now some people actually put light on the drone so that it draws something in the sky. In this case, the drone is capturing the light painting down on the roof. So this is part of the same series. It's also a group shot. This is the, the view from the rooftop as opposed to the sky. And the idea here is, what if the sky fell, what would it look like? Would it look like a splat? It does work. He would call out, uh, go and stop, in between eight seconds and two seconds, so that we would draw uh, the little pieces. It does work. But we did manage to get a whole picture that looked like a splash from the sky. What if the sky were to fall? What would it look like? Would it look like a big splash of sky and cloud on my rooftop? It does work. Three of us danced around with light from the roof while Max flew the drone on. It does work. One of the difficulties was the wind and it was making the camera shake. It does work. What if the sun, a piece of sun fell and splashed in like a splat on the roof, like a big lava? Glowing lava. It does work. And, and from then, I, uh, so this is actually like during 2020, so uh, group shots were not as big right then. Um, so I started, I continued to do these rooftop series, but uh, a lot of them I did on my, on my own now. Now this one uh, I did on my own, it's a 20 minute long shot. It's just one shot for 20 minutes. Because I'm running around doing each of those light paintings. And you can see how long it is, like if you look at the sky, you can see all the planes going by. That kind of gives you a, a sense of time. Also here I'll point out the two types of photography, um, I mean light painting, which are Direct light painting and indirect. So direct is when the light is shining into the camera and you draw with it like the lilies or the lily pads. Indirect is when you're shining the light away from the camera and you're lighting up subject. Like you can see the rooftop all around and also the blue part. Now before I get to that point, I have to practice each element in my studio. I have to figure out which tools are going to do what and how to move them to draw something that I want. And this can be like, this could take a lot of trial and error, which is part of light painting. It could also ask to be inventive, like maybe you have to invent a tool or uh, find new ways of doing something to be able to realize your vision. And once I have those elements, then I can place them into the landscape, just kind of like the jellyfish. And so then I decided to do uh, uh, different types of gardens. Uh, and for the, from, I decided to do a snow one, would be more like a bamboo forest, like I imagined a tiger or something. Uh, and here you have three types of lighting. So of course the existing city lights, the bamboo are just gels rolled up, the garden lamp, once again, and then the leaves are uh, the light stencils with gels. And you can also play with white balance when you do light painting, especially if you have a lot of sky. So you can go from cold to hot colors. 
And then from the cool winter, I went to the hot desert. And it took me a bunch of time to figure out how to make these dunes on already like a, a rooftop that was slanted. Uh, so that was a lot of trial and error as well. And then in the studio, I figured out how to make cat these different types of cactuses, which tools, and then once again, I inserted it into the uh, landscape. So this is all one shot. This is also represents a lot of work. It's a short video. Yeah. Yeah, I made these rocks out of brown bags. Mm -hmm. You can make props as well. If they can like paint. You can make stencils. You can even use your notepad as a stencil. Here's another version. These are the, what I call the giant poppies. And the way I made the poppies are actually like a Chinese umbrella upside down that I light up with red. So, I mean, you can use stuff around the house as well. You just have to test it out and be creative. So, like I said, I also like to use existing elements. And in this case, um, some of my neighbors were having a cocktail on the roof, and they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm doing light painting. Do you want to be part of it? And so they're like, yeah. And uh, I thought I would do like the Wizard of Oz poppy field, where they fall asleep in the poppy field. So I had them lie down and go to sleep. And, uh, and then I light painted all the flowers around them. Um, this is one shot as well. And uh, so it's, it's really fun to pull people in and make them a part of it. Uh, and so that is um, kind of part of my life journey that I wanted to share with you today. And in conclusion, I just want to say that um, <clears throat> my aim is, as an artist, is to offer beauty and playfully suggest new perspectives of the world around us and within us. Thank you. So I'm going to do a little demo, but maybe if there's any questions first. Anybody? Yes? That's a good question. Uh, so the, we try to do everything in camera. Like, that's like the challenge. But yeah, I might do like a little bit of retouching, like uh, contrast or um, if I made like a real big boo-boo, maybe, but usually I redo the light painting because it's quicker to do a light painting than it is to do retouching. So that's, that's how light painters think, anyways. Okay, that's a good question too. Um, actually, if you're in total darkness, no. 
Now, if, if they're like, if you're light painting in the street and a car goes by and shines the light, it will erase your light painting. Um, today I'm going to do a demo for you with my Olympus camera, which I bought because it's the only one that has a thing called live composite, which allows you to watch the light painting while it's happening. And for learning purposes, it really accelerates. Because when I first started, I'd have to wait like a day or two before I saw what I did which took more planning, but it's, I think it's, digital is good because you can improvise a lot, and when you improvise, you like, you know, you discover stuff. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, you can even use your phone. <laughs> but uh, you usually want a pretty powerful flashlight. these flashlights now, you know, they're over $100 each, so it's kind of like, you know, it's not any old flashlight. You can use an old flashlight. You might have to change the settings. So this one I particularly like. It has strobe. You can see how strong it is. And it has this ring on it where I can dim the light while I'm light painting. And then it has a few colors, but there's not as strong. Yeah. So, all right, any other questions? So we can get to the demo. Yeah, all right. Can you want to speak something? Oh, not yet. We have it all worked out. So, um, first I'm just going to show you the tools a little bit, and then I'm going to need a volunteer. <laughs> How about we have one, one, this is the first hand I saw, and how about one of the guys? Take turns. One at a time. One at a time. One, first, second. How about that? All right. All right, okay, you guys. So here's your flashlight. Here's your adapter. This is one of my light painting colleagues who uh, kind of invented it. So you just kind of get it here on your flashlight, and then you can apply different... This is a fiber. This is, yeah, this is one of the favorites. Tube. And you can like add glitter. Some people add actually fire. This used to be some sort of toy. I forget if it was maybe a toy bat. You can transform toys. Recycle. Plexi, so this is a feather, I'm going to make wings. And this is the scanner, so I'm going to show you two types of lighting the person today. I mean, you don't have to do a person, but we're just going to do it that way. So there's two types of lighting, there's the scanner, and then I also brought this nifty little color light, which is also expensive, unfortunately, and it can get super bright and you can change colors. This is fun. What you're seeing here is I'm using the, the iPad as a remote. Ah, 
So in this case, I'm going to get, I'm going to start off with the tube. So make sure that all your tools are ready. Okay, it looks like it's connected. So the way the, the, the connector works, as you can see on the flashlight here, I can put it inside this tube, and then I can take the tube off and insert the uh, feather. So now we're ready for lights off. <clears throat> I don't know why it's 
No, 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 no. That's, 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 uh, for some reason, there's a disconnect. by the light. This is just the thing that you want to have in mind. Okay, it looks like it's connecting everyone.
super close. Okay, and now when it starts, you aim them at the camera and go. Oh, that's super bright. You can do it like, you can tell how bright they are. The, the longer you pinch them, the brighter they are. Questions? I guess. The flashing stroke, the flashlight that stroke. Yeah. Right. Like, right. 